Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon goes head to head with the most stubborn chef he's ever met. I thought your food was crap. That's a matter of opinion. And unearths the secret garden's dirty little secrets. <laughs> Gordon cooks up a rescue plan. We will make this a success. But this French chef fights back. Is everything perfect in your kitchen? Don't fucking dare start lecturing me. This is the lowest day of this restaurant's life. Now. Can Gordon save the secret garden? Who the fuck are you to turn around and tell me when you were like a pig? You yeah. French pig! Find out tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. Park, California, gateway to wine country, luxury golf courses, and booming real estate. A great location for a restaurant. But the Secret Garden is on the brink of financial ruin. Thank you for calling the Secret Garden. How may I help you? My name is Michel. I'm the chef and owner at the Secret Garden. Am I a good chef? I think so. He's French. That's his biggest problem. He's French. So you're going to have to uh, excuse my arrogance. I'm not cooking with the stuff that's in there. When I lose my temper, it's time for you to run. You told me already earlier you were gonna compete and they have to leave. Michelle just may blow up and say, what are you doing? You wanna push me in the kitchen? I will scream at everybody. Michelle's arrogant, he's French, he's a chef. All chefs are arrogant. You know what? Stop repeating, okay? French people enjoy the quality of life a little more than the American. <laughs> I spill. Michelle can be very, very uh, difficult to work with. Jane! Michelle? Serve that. That cannot sit. He's got an ego the size of France. As soon as it's ready. Come on, I need that too. Let's fix it. No, 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 no. I'm getting frustrated. The atmosphere here is definitely geared toward uh, a more mature crowd. This is the kind of restaurant that you take your grandma out for a nice meal. It's not really the happening Saturday night spot. Michelle is having a tough time making ends meet. I can only imagine what his books must look like. We need $200. That's not going to pay the bills again. I have about $300,000 to $320,000 in debt. That's a lot of money to pay back. And this is depressing. Look at that. If the restaurant keeps going the way it's going, I, I won't be able to keep the doors open. I need help. The Secret Garden, fine dining. Gordon Ramsay has just one week to uncover the problems, to devise a plan, and to turn this restaurant around. Place is locked. Where's the entrance? That's locked as well. God. Hey, door. Right. God. Where is everybody? Hello, is anyone here? Who wants to sit and eat in front of that fat little bastard? Morning. Hello, how are you? And you are? Jane. Jane, good to see you. Uh, where's Chef? Chef's here. OK. Well... Michelle? Good morning, welcome. How are you? Michelle, how are yes. you? Yes, nice to meet you. Good to see you. Well, I finally got in. Couldn't find the front door. The front door is off the parking lot. Well, I mean, I couldn't find it. So it's the best kept secret in Moore Park. And you've been running the restaurant for seven years? Seven years, yes. God, and how long has it been quiet for? Seven years. OK, well, I'll go and sit in the restaurant. I feel like I'm at Buckingham Palace. Um, Jesus, what is that? That's a, it's, it's a doily. People love those. People love those? Mm -hmm. Really? You've got all that fancy crap on there, and yet the glass is dirty. Oh, God. Right, it's almost ready, Jane. I feel like inviting my grandma for lunch. 
you not have got a bigger basket? I feel sorry for that poor, lonely bread roll in there. Let me just have a look at it before you serve it. Yeah. Oh, Christ, I feel like saying a prayer. So, um... A lunch menu and a dinner menu. Ooh, Dave Miz greens with sunflower seeds, dried cranberries and Montrachet cheese. God, is there anything plain on here, Jane? I think it's all good. Thank fuck for that. Is the crab fresh? No, it's canned. It's canned? Mm -hmm. We'll can that one, then. Baby spinach salad with strawberries, goat's cheese, asparagus, hard-boiled egg and grilled garlic shrimp. Strawberries and shrimps? Mm-hmm. I'll start with that, please, as my appetizer. Absolutely. I've got to think about a chef's perception of food when he starts to put strawberries with fresh garlic shrimps. We'll see how he likes it. He's a customer. Customer is almost always right. Dear God, for what we're about to receive, may the Lord not kill me with food poisoning. Mm. Oh, Jesus. That's disgusting. I'll wait for the next course. Are you done? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, yeah. Sadly, the uh, prawns are uh, stone cold and undercooked. OK. Uh, your prawns are undercooked and cold. When he sent the first dish back, I knew that we were going to have a little problem. Yeah, I wrote for stuff for AFP, stuff for pink. Thank you. OK, bon appetit. Big, dirty, greasy chip plate and, like, a big, overgrown ball of pubic hair. Deep fat fried. I'm fucked if I'm eating that shit, that's for sure. As tough as old boots. Go on. Damn. Raw carrot. Fine if you're a fucking rabbit. How was your steak? Um, carrots were raw, steak was tough. Um, and that was just a big ball of grease. Um, the play was interesting, especially with the chip. Gordon gave us a scathing review. Thank you. It's lazy, it's dirty, and it's just bad. I mean, really crap. Your carrots were raw, your steak was tough, and your uh, shoestring potatoes was a big ball of grease. A big ball of grease? Nightmare in Grandma's house. Fuck me. Thank God she's dead. Michelle definitely does not respond to criticism. He likes to be the man. You seem proud of that food. You seem quite... Yeah, I like it. You like I, it? Yeah, I think it's good. I mean, don't take this personally. Yes. I thought your food was crap. Tasteless, bizarre. Your food was long-winded, boring, and just, you know, badly done. Honestly, I've never seen anyone talk to Michelle in the way Ramsey talked to him. As a waitress, I don't get complaints about the food. The only complaint I might get is uh, a food cold. Jane, I'm not asking you to blow smoke up his arsehole. <laughs> I've just sat there for the last hour and had one of the worst meals I've ever eaten. That's a matter of opinion. Oh, God. You know, not... Are you that fucking arrogant? A matter of opinion? No, not being that arrogant. If you're such a passionate chef, and you are a natural because you're French and yes. you, know, uh -huh. you love cooking. Yes. Why are you serving tin crab meat? Um, tin crab, the main reason is because the restaurant is quiet. I buy fresh crab, goes bad really fast, so I have to buy this, uh, this crab. Uh, I, 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 I'm trying to get inside your mind so I can start breaking down okay. how stupid you are. I don't think he likes Michelle. We've got a lot of work to do in a very short period of time. Okay, let's All I need is not some form of French arrogance. I just need your support and, more importantly, your honesty. But I don't feel you're um, honest. I'm honest. Thank fuck for that. Thank you for the critique. What an arrogant twat. He's so far up his own ass, he can't even fucking breathe anymore. Oh. Coming up, mold is festering. Gordon finds the dirty little secrets. <laughs> Leading to a fiery food fight. That's how you work. Is everything perfect? Even in your kitchen? Don't fucking dare start lecturing me. And later, will this French chef be the one to push Gordon Ramsay over the edge? Who the fuck are you to turn around and tell me when you were like a pig? You yeah. French pig! Day two. After being disappointed with the food, Gordon now inspects the kitchen. OK, uh, Michelle's not here. I want to have a good look around and just find out what's in the fridges. Oh, that's 
Oh, when was the last time that was clean? Oh, my God. It's so dirty. Oh. Fuck. My goodness me. Mold everywhere. The food's been in this fridge for so long, even the fridge has now started to go moldy. Look, just here, there's like mold caked on. This thing hasn't been cleaned for years. Look, it's real mold. It's been here that long, even the bottle's moldy. The place is a health hazard. Mold is festering, so potentially dangerous in terms of poisoning someone. This place can't stay open. The place is disgusting. Maggots. Oh, confess the maggots. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. Hi, Gordon. Michelle. How are you doing? Who organizes this place? The cooks and myself. When was the last time we had a really good sort out? Um, um, yesterday. Yesterday? Yes. Look, underneath here, the amount of mold that's growing. Look. It's really important that you're honest with me. Every time I say something to you, all you do is smile at me. Because, when, when, um, when are you going to get serious, Michelle? I. I, I am serious. Well, show me some fucking seriousness then, will you? Because if you were serious, you wouldn't be having this up there. What the fuck is that? That's the uh, dark chocolate terrain and uh, That's white how you work? Market. There's finger marks in there where someone's gone in with their hands. That's how you work? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. You don't care anymore, do you? Is everything perfect? Even in your kitchen? I don't think so. It's fucking clean. Wait a minute. This guy with the attitude that has no idea what's going on insults me, tells me that he doesn't have to, you know, his restaurant bullshit. I don't want you to come and tell me if everything no, is awful. You hate the truth. No, I don't hate the you truth. You hate the truth. Tell me that everything is awful. You know what? I can give the fuck right to. I work for Thomas Keller. I know yeah. how the kitchen goes. How long ago? I work for Thomas for Guy Listen, Carson. Yeah, listen. Hey, let me give Thomas you a... Keller doesn't run a kitchen like this. No, he doesn't. Thomas Keller's one yeah, of the most amazing chefs in America. He'd be uh, fucking embarrassed if he saw yeah. this shit. Uh, maybe, maybe not. This is extraordinary. It was good for him to be humbled. Michelle was of the opinion that, hey, if I want to serve dog shit on a plate and the customer doesn't like it, too bad. The restaurant is not doing that bad, OK? I make decent money. How much money have you made in seven years? How much money have I made where? In the restaurant in seven years. Wait, what do you mean? How much money have you made in seven years? Ah, sorry. It's a big question. You need to make it smaller. How much profit have you made in one year? You're hiding from me. Mm, no, not really, but... You don't want my help? I, yeah, I, I want your help. I want your help, but, you know, I want... Good help. Don't fucking dare start lecturing me what you want me to tell you. I'm here to help. The quicker you understand that, the better for all of us. Right now, every time I tell you something, it's the man that's just fucking ignoring everything I say. I've met some stubborn fuckers in my time, but you take the piss. For the rest of the day, the secret garden was busier than usual. Not cooking but cleaning. Clean kitchen, clean food, yeah? I want it spotless. I think that the kitchen looked gross. It's good to see Michelle scrubbing. He's beginning to show some skills in a kitchen. Now that the cleanliness of the kitchen is up to Gordon's standards, it's time for him to check out a full dinner service. Well, maybe not a full dinner service. The feeling when you walk in and there's nothing, it's kind of like a slap in the face. Good. Customers, a little on the stale side, but customers nonetheless. What the hell kind of puny appetizer is that? What is that, Michelle? This is a canopy. Canopy? Yes. Strawberries aren't even right there. We've been doing it for a while, people love it. 
you decide. I will take sweet yeah. potato bisque. Okay, I'll get this for you. Thank you. Can I have a potato bisque, please? Yeah, I'll take a couple of minutes for you to cook it. The food all takes too long to cook, so when I take my order, it will be at least 25 minutes before it's on the table. My belief is, you know, it's nice to sit down and enjoy yourself, spend two, three hours in a restaurant. That's the difference between uh, America and France. People eat a lot slower in France than in America and America. Okay, now. God bless America. As customers continue to wait, Gordon's discovered Michelle's overcomplicated dishes are taking too long to prepare. Michelle, you're fascinated by crusted items and stuffing things, aren't you? Mm, a little bit of everything. Look at the menu. Macadamia nut, mai mai. Crusted. The scallops. Crusted. They have the chili garlic crusted salmon. Crusted. Stuffed chicken. Crusted. The pork chop. Crusted. And then the filet, that's a uh, stuff. I like good food. I like rich food. I think it's great. It's a little spicy, but not too spicy. It's a matter of opinion. Either nobody likes everything, everybody does. Go for it. Oh dear, it's gonna be a long night. God, this guy is fucking unbelievable. You know, there's one thing about being bad, that's solvable, but being in complete denial throughout, it's extraordinary. I've never met such a fucking hard-ass, stubborn bullshitter in all my life. This is gonna be way overcooked. Nope. Medium rare, look perfect. Even with few diners in the dining room, Michelle's stubbornness continues to create problems in the kitchen. What table? Actually, what table is it on that filet pickup? That's the soup you ordered. Are we picking up seven? Oh, my God. Michelle wants to be the star of the show. Let me worry about it, please. Understood, chef. I could have been doing so much more, but Michelle wouldn't let me. I got you. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. If a chef is too good, Michelle does get a bit jealous. I'm gonna go see what's happening in the dining room. With Michelle headed towards the dining room, sous chef Devin takes over. I know what I'm doing. I'm a machine, and I'm all over the place. And the food is finally getting out. Right, where is Michelle? First time, or you've been here before? First time? I like to go to the customers because it's great for my ego. What are we drinking? Oh, Pinot Noir, yeah, I forgot. I think I know the guy that sells that wine. Michelle does tend to talk an awful lot. Yeah, I have a glass of wine waiting for me. Yeah. I, I hope it's good. Nothing's consistent. No one's taking anything. No one's got any passion. And if one thing the French have got is passion, here, yeah, zero. After observing dinner service, Gordon has come to a conclusion. OK, so let me tell you what I have seen and witnessed all day. I've seen a man that I think is far more in love with himself than he is with his restaurant. OK. Tomorrow, we start working together. No arguing, clear understanding, chef to chef, and I want to see some passion. Do you understand the word passion? Because I haven't seen any of it. It tells me that I don't give a shit about people, like only about myself. This is all bullshit. You can do much better. This is all bullshit. Coming up... Of all the specials got, Michelle. Chaos in the Kitchen has Gordon seeing red. Any food? Is this table four? I don't have it. It is, quite frankly, the most disorganized restaurant. How was your appetizer? It's pathetic. It's embarrassing. Who the fuck are you to turn around and tell me when you were like a pig? You yeah. French pig! And is the secret garden doomed to be a secret forever? Day three. Gordon is determined to get through to this stubborn chef with help from a little shock therapy. OK, new day, and I'm determined that this guy is going to finally start listening to what I'm trying to say. So this morning, I've shut the place down, I've boarded it up, I'm going to make him understand if he doesn't start changing and listening to what I'm trying to say, that's for the end result. And that's a sight no restaurant wants to see. How you turn up to work so late? What's going on? I'm not closing down. 
This bullshit. Good morning. This is not funny. I'm pissed. Good. Good. You've got every reason to be pissed. I'm glad you're angry. Yeah. Finally woken up. Now, I've done this for a reason. Just think how bad it would be for your business to close. I don't see anything constructive here. It's a small town. Ten people drove by, and guess what? They're going to be advertising on TV. Oh, the restaurant is not doing well. OK, let's go, big boy. If the restaurant were to close down, I don't know what I would do. That'd feel almost a shame. But for this restaurant to truly turn around, it starts with the menu. Simple food, no frills, straightforward, good flavor, and getting customers coming back once a week, not once a year. Hey, everybody, every time we touch something tonight, we're going to be tasting. Yes, yeah, sure. chef. Everything. Now, Everything. Gordon is going to teach Michelle some simple money-making specials to put on the menu. OK, so first dish should be a roast chicken. Roasted, simple, and bang, out, yeah? Okay. Nothing fancy. Nice and easy. There's a lot of things. Just because we've been doing them forever does not mean we've been doing them the right way. Nothing too expensive. That's not difficult, is it, guys? Trying to simplify how we work faster, cleaner, and better. They're the four specials. Onion gratin, tuna niçoise, roasted chicken, and a fresh, local asparagus warm tart. Yes? Any questions? Is he the great cook? No. I was voted best chef in Conejo Valley. Saturday night is the one night that the Secret Garden is busy and a perfect time to test Gordon's new specials. I've got some fantastic specials to tell you about. Tuna nichoisie, a warm asparagus tart, a roast chicken, it's very moist, it's very good. All crisp and it's very delicious. We've got some customers in under the age of 50. It's exciting. What can I get for you, sir? The uh, French onion soup, the special. The special, the asparagus tart. Ooh, music to my ears. Right here, please, right away. Devil 43. Okay. How was everything? It was oh, excellent. My it was so good. Uh, it was the perfect tenderness and it was the perfect size. And How does everything taste for you? Very good. Very good. Gordon Rams is brilliant because the responses I get off all my customers is the food is great here. We love it. Cheers. Cheers. Over an hour into meal service, and the specials are proving to be very popular, but orders are starting to back up in the kitchen. Wait, four. No, 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 not yet. Is this table four? Is this table four? Table four. What is table four? Is this table four? I don't know. No. Not table four. People were making mistakes on which tables to run the food to. This is not right. This is not right. Are they communicating with you, Michelle? No. They're, they're talking too much. Not communicating. No, that's All right. Table 16 is going to order something else, OK? Let me worry about it. You told me already earlier you were going to come, Pete, and they have to leave. Uh, we've been here for like an hour and a half and haven't eaten. I know. I'm going to say the communication wasn't quite there from the kitchen. There's not enough potatoes for the special. There's not enough eggs for the special. And no one's communicating. We're well, telling you you have nothing left. They're still ordering them. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I've got some specials to tell you about. We've got a warm asparagus tart. It's topped with a mixed green. Very delicious. Special they sold out within 40 minutes of being on the menu. And now Michelle's not communicating. They're ordering food, and we haven't even got it. I have an asparagus tart that was ordered for table uh, two. I don't have it. I ate it 60 20 minutes ago. What else is 86 I don't know about? Let, let me worry about it. Oh. Who's in charge of that dining room out there? Uh... Chaos in the kitchen has resulted in angry customers in the dining room. How was your appetizer? I never received it. Oh, you haven't received it, why not? No? I keep asking. I'm getting a little cranky. Even though it's the kitchen's fault, we take the brunt of it, and we take the brunt of the anger. I can only hope that you forgive us. I know that you haven't had your entree yet. Customers were pissed. They were really, really pissed at us. Send a manager. Send a manager out here. Cold. Listen, all I can do at this point is give you food. I can't do anything else. Table four demanding that their food is compromised. And now, instead of turning a profit with their new specials, they're giving food away. Yeah, you know what? You're going to have to hold back five minutes. It was just chaos. Everybody panicked. I'm getting frustrated. You want to push me in the kitchen, I will scream at everybody. So wait five minutes. When I lose my temper, 
It's time for you to run. I can make one, Chef. You want me to do it? Let me worry about it. You know what? Serve the food. I don't care. Serve that. Michelle was just, like, glaring at me all damn day. And I didn't deserve it. Jane, you know what? Serve your words. I have any more. It's a bit demoralizing when he's like that. As soon as it's ready, OK? All get out. Go in the dining room, take care of the customers. It is, quite frankly, the most disorganized restaurant in America tonight. Pick up. Jane, let's go, let's go. They're walking out. No, I'm loaded over. No, 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 no. Come here, you have no guts. Where's Jane? I can't do it. Jane's not OK. It all got blown up in our face today. I just am a little bit overwhelmed. What table? Yeah. So whatever the table is out there. They were getting their asses handed to them. I'm mad, because everyone's gotten their entree, and I haven't gotten anything. It's tough. Thank you. No. You know, because I'm going to find a manager. I think the kitchen is closed. To me, this is the lowest day of this restaurant's life. Pick up now. Kitchen is closed. Still ahead, when customers mow down the door... Well, there's a wheel, there's a weapon. Michelle struggles to stay out of the weeds. I'm getting frustrated. Oh, come on. But old habits die hard. You run a shit all of the kitchen. And Gordon loses oh, it. Oh, no. fucking Fuck. kitchen. Yeah, is it? Well, it's your fucking kitchen and cleaner, you lazy cunt. No! Okay. No, 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 no. Where's Jane? To me, this is the lowest day of this restaurant's life. Kitchen is closed. Come on. Out. Even though Gordon's new specials got them off to a good start, the dinner service ended in disaster, and Michelle and his staff were exposed. I observed tonight, and I was watching everything. Waiters were picking up food that didn't belong to them, taking orders with specials on them that we no longer had. Communication, Michelle, was zero. I think everybody can communicate properly over here. There was no control, Michelle. This is all bullshit, OK? My restaurant is doing better than this asshole over there. Do you think this is a fucking game? Let me tell you. Now, my thing is, shut up. Enough of tonight. I want to move on. We will make this a success. Day four, relaunch day, and time for Gordon to start implementing his plan, starting with the Secret Garden's outdated decor. Look around. This is like walking into a funeral Thanks. parlor. What does this do in a restaurant? Look at the mess of it. I think it gives the charm of the antique. It's not. This is going. That is going. I want to get rid of that stuff. Here we go. Chef, right behind you there. I'm opening up your eyes and making the room more spacious. I don't like it. You don't like it? No. Bye, Grandma. Next step. Gordon's design team moves in to bring the restaurant into the 21st century, redecorating the dining room, replacing the old-fashioned sign, and restoring the main entrance. OK, good. New menu, unstuffy dining room, big, big, big night tonight. Now, get in here, Chef Michel, with your team, and look at your new decor. Very pretty. Oh, my goodness. This is gorgeous. The rumor is bigger. We've got depth and we've got clarity. There's no clutter. How beautiful. Michelle, first impressions? Completely different. It's not the secret garden anymore. It's a totally different restaurant. Do you think the dining room looks younger? Yes, yes it does. Yes. Are you worried about that? Uh, big time. I don't want to destroy what I have. I want to improve what I have. Can you give me two minutes, please, with uh, Chef Michel? The few customers that we have, I think they're going to come in, they're going to go, you know, this is different, I like yeah. it. Instead of helping my business, you might hurt my business. Give me a chance. OK. Give me fucking chance. I'm not too crazy about the changes, but let's see what he can do, what he can bring to the restaurant. 
With only a few hours to the relaunch of the restaurant, Gordon unveils the most important part of his plan, the menu. We'll go through it together, yeah? For tonight's dinner service, gone are the crusted dishes, stuffed dishes, and the garlic, shrimp, and strawberry salad. And in their place are... I've done the filet mignon, the tuna niçoise, the local beet salad, the pan roasted chicken breast, and then the double cut pork chop. Um, any questions on the menu? That's brilliant. That, that's a really brilliant idea. I was concerned with that menu because, you know, I'm used to my old menu and I'm sure people are going to ask for it. For tonight's grand reopening, Gordon has invited local celebrities and dignitaries and one very influential guest. Big, big, big night. Yes, tonight is the beginning of a new chapter in Secret Gardens, yes? Tonight is the night. We set the standards tonight, yes? If we do get busy, we do not panic. Now. There's a food critic in tonight. Knowing that there was a food critic, I was nervous. I mean, this is not going to be Michelle. This is different. What are they going to say? How are they going to like it? You don't know. Good luck, everybody. Now that Gordon's plan has been put into effect, it's up to Michelle and his staff to execute. And reservation for Lisa. Finally, some life in this place. Hallelujah. It's about seven, two onion soup, let's go. I was nervous. This is an important night. We have important people in the restaurant. Miss California has just turned up. Wow. Mike, table six, only half of the appetizers are gone. It is so important to keep our cool in the kitchen because that's when it's difficult. Are you listening, Mike? And that's when you make the mistakes. With a sudden rush of customers, Michelle's nerves are being put to the test. We got a, a bus of 24 people that came. Unexpectedly, um, a large bus has turned up from a local vineyard, so it's caused pandemonium. Michelle, can you make sure they don't start panicking now yes. when we're right in the middle of this crucial fucking night? Let's go over there. I need to get cooking now. Thank you. Not tonight, guys, yes? Quiet in the kitchen tonight. If Gordon gets in my way. Give me the knife. I'll take care of it. I promise I'll make him suffer. It's relaunch night at the Secret Garden, and the onslaught of new customers is putting Michelle and his team to the test. Mike, come right here, please, right away. This is an important night. We have food critics. We have important people in the restaurant. We can let it fall apart. Unexpectedly, um, a large bus has turned up from a local vineyard, so it's called pandemonium. A bus of 24 people that came? It's craziness. It's it's happening. Seven onion soup ordering. Onion soup ordering. Michelle has cleared his first hurdle, and the rush of customers has been taken care of. But the Secret Garden faces another challenge. Jane, have you spotted the food critic yet? Any idea who she is? No. Yeah, she's actually um, she's actually on a table of five now. She joined four of the people. Oh, really? Is that table 10? Yes. That is the one we give the biggest shit about. Order in, chef. Bring it here. That's for the food critic table. OK, in one minute. Two now. Take that out. Do you have any feedback for me? They're going to ask? Yes, the fish itself was very um, salty and over seasoned. Okay. And it was just over seasoned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Table 10 hates the food. Oh no, 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 fuck off. No. It was salty and. What's that, the tuna? The tuna. Michelle, I don't know what happened. Come on, guys. When some of the food came back, the tuna was over salty. I was sweating, I was shivering. No, but let's offer them something else instead. I did, they don't want anything else. The new menu, it's good, but it's not good enough. We have to make it good enough. Yeah, I apologize for that. If I give you uh, one of my signature dish, um, is that gonna make you feel a little bit better? Uh, yeah, something just to balance the tartness. 
you know. Uh huh. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you for giving me another chance. Yeah. You know, I'll get a little more used to the menu. It's a brand new menu for me, also. Yeah. Not an excuse, but it's always a little harder. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, I'm pissed. Come on, that's his food. He's the one sending it out. Remember, David, when there's a will, there's a way. Gordon, your menu is not better than mine. Oh, fucking hell. After over seasoning the tuna, Michelle is abandoning the new menu. He's now preparing to send his stuffed filet of beef, and Gordon is not happy. Hey, come on, please. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, no, 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 yes. I can see it on your face, but I am not going to start here and let you send shit. Not tonight, huh? No way. I'm getting frustrated. Oh, come on. Mr. Big Chef shouldn't be in the kitchen. The guy's not a chef. With the restaurant on the verge of success, Chef Michelle is insisting on reverting back to his old ways, and Gordon has reached his breaking point. Thank you very much. I think okay, it's great. Okay. Cut you, the bullshit. you don't care anymore, do you? Get yeah. straight to the yeah. fucking answer. No, I'm not cutting no bullshit. I'm Get telling you how it is. Fucking answer. Okay? All right? Okay. All right, good. Your menu is not better than mine. You know? You're a donkey. My food has been voted best chef in, uh, in Ventura County. What? Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't, don't Let me finish. Finger. Let me finish. Don't push you the finger. Put your fucking hands up here. Listen to me. You run a shit hole of a kitchen. Fuck yourself. No. Okay? No. no. Fuck off. Who the fuck are you to turn around and tell me when you work like a pig? You yeah. French pig! Yeah, you know what? You're lazy pig. Yeah, yeah big You're word. so full of shit. Open your eyes big and look, look round. Big mouth. You're not happy? I'm fucking happy. You, you can get out. Go on. You can get out. Fuck yourself. You can get out. It's oh. my out. fucking Fuck. kitchen. Yeah, is it? Well, it's your fucking kitchen and clean it, you lazy cunt. No! It's relaunch night at the Secret Garden, and Chef Michelle is insisting on reverting back to his old ways. And Gordon has reached his breaking point. You don't care anymore, do you? Get straight to the yeah. fucking answer. No, I'm not cutting no bullshit. I'm Get telling you how it is. Get straight to the fucking answer. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Good. Your menu is not better than mine. You run a shithole of a kitchen, you yeah. French pig! You can get out. Go on. You can get out. Fuck yourself. You can get out. Oh. My no, fucking no. kitchen. Yeah, is it? Well, it's your fucking kitchen and clean it, you lazy cunt. No. I've got to get some air before I do something I really regret. I don't want him in my kitchen. The way Ramsey did this incredible diatribe on Michelle, and he was just blown away, flabbergasted. An extraordinary day today, but I've never seen anything quite as shocking as that. And that guy clearly doesn't care about his customers, his food, or his dining room. He just cares about himself. One selfish French fucker. Where's the train station? I seriously thought about walking away, but there were other people relying on me. I had to finish the job. After cooling off, Gordon decides to return to prevent the old menu dish from leaving the kitchen. Okay, yeah, chef, chef. Yes. Hey, I don't want to look at you in a month's time and say you've got screwed, slammed, food critic. I just want everything to be fucking I perfect. I agree. And you want that to be as well, yes? Yes. Every table is a VIP table, yes? Yes. Jane. Can we get rid of that food, please, finally, yeah? For the fifth time. Good. Michelle, please don't panic. No, yeah? I won't. Jane, no one's panicking, yes? No. Yeah? Please keep it together. Right, up, up and away. Let's go, yeah? That's for the uh, VIP table? That's for the food critic table. Finally, the food critic was given a proper dish from the new menu. Even though the food critic was happy with the dish from the new menu, Michelle was still not convinced. You're going to go out there and see them? I'm going to go to every, every table. When I go to the customers, they're my real critics. Let's see what people think about Gordon's new menu. Oh, it's fantastic. And the salmon is the best I've ever had. Really? Was everything you're liking this evening? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank How do you like the new dining room? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. When I ask the customers, they say they love it. The food was exquisite. It was delicious. Now I'm wondering what I do wrong. How was the people when they left? Um, everyone loved it. Everyone, yes? not an angry face. <laughs> OK, really but I want to make sure that not angry doesn't mean they loved it. I want to make sure that they left and they say everything was great. The people that I asked, they all did. Wonderful. Thank you.
But if Michelle needed a little more convincing, the answer was in the cash register. You know, for 60 customers, we need $50 per person. So we need a little bit more than $3,000 of revenue. This is great. Thank it was you. great to have the business. After an evening of ups and downs, the relaunch was a success. But there is still one question left unanswered. Did Gordon truly get through to Michelle? It is difficult to do changes, and maybe not for everybody, but for me. I'm like, so wrong. Are you just saying that? No, no, I mean it. I mean it. The customers love the changes. I like the way the food came out, how it was clean, and we made a profit. I think it's exciting. I, I, I know how stubborn you are. Yes. And it's not the first time in my career I've come across someone as stubborn as you. However, tonight was much better than the other night. You put your first foot on the ladder. Mm -hmm. Now you've got to keep on climbing. Yes. When I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Well done. Now that you know, don't stop. I won't. With Gordon's help, the secret garden was functioning as a restaurant should. And as the week progressed, changes clearly began to take hold. If we all spend half an hour cleaning, this kitchen becomes spotless. Michelle is committed to kitchen hygiene. He also promoted Jane to manager. I think she needs the keys of the restaurant with the manager title. Tonight, Jane is the manager. <laughs> Now I'm the manager. I am the bitch of the place. Gordon's plan was a success, and now the secret garden is no longer a kitchen nightmare. And more importantly, customers are leaving happy. I'm feeling the love. Cheers. You really do have something special. Please do not screw it up. The restaurant has improved immensely. Ramsay succeeded. Dude, Thanks, manager. If we can't be successful now, then we're all idiots. Thank you so much. Mwah. Well Thank done. You. It was very sad to see Gordon leaves. Really helped us. I think we are at the beginning of a very, very successful year. No regrets. Thank you. No regrets. Promise. 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 Still hate me? Oh yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> Good. All my heart. It was a very stressful few days, but I think we all survive. I think it's all for the better. The secret is out. Michelle finally learned the cardinal rule of being a restaurateur. You serve your customers, not yourself. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon heads for an Italian restaurant that's headed for disaster. Why did you decide to become a chef owner if you haven't got a clue how to run a business? But you couldn't tell that by watching the staff. Give me a break. Is Campania a business? Good afternoon, Campania. Or a high school cooking class? <laughs> It's like a big romper room back there. The owner is the big man on campus. People love my food. No seriously in denial. And the employees... You! ...seem to be here for the party. Kumpani is like high school. It's everybody, like, really gets along. I feel like I'm in the middle of a rehearsal for friends. Are you so sexy when you're making chicken? It takes forever for the food to get out of the kitchen. I need your specials now. That fucking never went out? On top of that, there's not only fighting in the restaurant... I want to go strangle her. There's fighting in the parking lot. Why did you keep eating if it was that bad? And because the enormous portions are ensuring no one leaves without a party favor... Even the dog's got a serving there. There's a bone for him as well. The food costs are out of control. I could go in there and just give you $500 of waste. But now, the party's over. You have to cut these portions down. If Gordon can't get this cast of friends to grow up... Take it serious. I will. Run it like a boss. This restaurant's gonna be grounded for life. I felt like I was eating ragu. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. This is not party time. This is serious time. We're doing it. OK? All right. Let's go. Fairlawn, New Jersey a predominantly Italian community about 20 minutes from New York City. For years, Campania was a successful business, but since Joe Cerniglia took ownership 18 months ago, the business has dramatically declined, and it's only a few months away from closing. Good afternoon, Campania. I didn't go to culinary school. What's this chicken for? We don't have recipes. We don't use measuring cups or spoons, because I'm the best. <laughs> We were waiting on the pecans. There's no pecans. Huh? There's no pecans. It said pine nuts. Oh! We have a lot of fun here. <laughs> sometimes I guess a bad thing because we don't take everything too seriously sometimes. Nut job. Fuck you. 
not a nut job. The kitchen's always playing practical jokes on each other. Why will you stop locking him in the walk-in? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mo. <laughs> it's like a big romper room back there. Give me a break. We're all like little kids. We're all very silly. I'm still a kid. I still have a tongue ring. I still have a tattoo. And I don't really plan on changing the way I think anytime soon. I am serious, but I'm going to have fun with it while I'm, you know, in the process. Get to work. <laughs> Campani definitely has its, its, its share of problems, big problems. Oh, fuck. Our oven is broken, completely broken. These are not working ovens, so they've now become storage for us. We have two walk-ins. The handles are broke. First, this latch broke, so this door just kind of swings open. It doesn't lock shut. The men back there, they should be able to fix it. I think I'm a pretty democratic boss. Open your freezer. Get me some pancetta. Joe gets very easily flustered and frustrated, which a lot of times winds up making everybody break down. Ev, you got the broccoli rob? She was about to I don't have broccoli rob. I asked you if you had broccoli rob. You said yes. Come on. It took long enough. It's frustrating here because food needs to come out quicker. That shit should have been done last night. I worry about Joe. I worry about stress level. I worry about Melissa. I worry about the boys. It is not easy. I'm financially in trouble. The debt of the restaurant alone is overwhelming. My personal debt, wife, kids, mortgage, that's a lot of debt. You put everything into one venture. It takes a, a lot of courage, you know. I owe my purveyors about $80,000 right now in cold, hard cash. I'll get something out to you on a Monday. You better. Some of the purveyors will show up and ask for a check but I don't know if it's the economy or what. I can't see us going on another year, and, and that's a really scary thought, and I'm gonna do everything in my power to avoid that. I'm looking for a restaurant, an Italian restaurant, on the main strip here, oh. Campania. Thank you. Campania. Hardly a uh, perfect location for a restaurant on a strip mall, but Let's be honest, it's the food accounts, and I've heard they've got problems, huh? Oh, dear. Hello. Hey, are we one? Uh, oh, yes, today I'm on my own. Yes, follow me, In please. fact, most times I'm always on my own. <laughs> how are you today? Good, how are you doing? Here well, you go, thank sir. you. You're welcome, excuse Lovely, me. thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Ramsey, how are you, man? I'm Joe Siniglia. Good to see you. Welcome to New Jersey. Is this a... Uh, are you always pointing, or is that just... I point a lot. I use my hands, you know. I'm Southern Italian, so there's a lot of that. All right. That's the way I am. It's the way I operate. I don't know what he was looking at. OK, what would you like today? Uh, may I start, please? I'll try the uh, Borgo, tortellini. Yes. And then um, I'll try the uh, ravioli. OK. Finish with, uh, with pistachio and cranberry crusted breast of chicken. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Ready to go, Joseph. Clam white tortellini soup. I mean, I was smiling, but my heart was racing. Backing that up with a tortellini soup. But I got tortellini soup working, I got my half rav working, I got it all. You, my friend, relax. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a very, very busy kitchen back there. I'm so effing hungry. Oh, so oh, hungry. I didn't eat anything oh, all day. So I'm hungry. hungry. You're hungry? I'm hungry. I'm hungry, yeah. What is going on in there? God. The brow. Relax. <laughs> uh, I thought you'd gone home. No. No. He's waiting for your soup. I hope Gordon's satisfied. If he's not, I'm sure he's going to let us know. You're just bland and tasteless. That one was definitely not worth the wait. How is everything? Are they made here, these? Or they bought in? They're filled with veal. Oh, no, I know it's, I trust me, oh, I don't I know. know what it okay, was. I'm that sorry. wasn't the question I asked. They're homemade, yes, they're bought in from a place that makes them homemade. Thank you. Is it popular? Yeah, um, somewhat. I love the way you skip over it. <laughs> Are they popular? Not too many people order it as much, no. So, no. Thank you, mate. You're welcome. Mm. I think Gordon's going to drive me crazy by the end of it all. It's going to drive us all crazy. Homemade means made on site. End of story. Cut the crap. So they're up. All right, let's take them out. Uh, 
Thank you. You're welcome. So this is the grilled sausage in there, yes? Yes, yes. Lovely. Mm. Garlic everywhere. Big, big, big chunks of it everywhere. Hey, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't want to go back to the office with that breath, would you? Gordon found that we had too much garlic in our sauce. Jesus. I tend to like garlic, so I never really noticed it. OK. Thank you. OK, you're welcome. Thank you very much. I would like a toothbrush now, please. You want to know it's too much garlic? Son of a bitch. I think it was just fine. Personally, for me, if I was eating that, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Off I go. Here you go. Excellent. Cacio chicken. What is that on top that there? That is grilled zucchini. OK. Holy mackerel. Looks like your bison's tongue. It's dry, it's sweet, and it's... <sighs> oh, dear. He didn't like the chicken, didn't like the sauce, didn't like the crust, thought it was well done, hated it. One thing that fascinated me throughout that whole lunch, all I could hear was laughing and joking and lots of screaming coming out of the kitchen. Um, I was pissed off waiting. You don't expect to hear all that laughing and giggling when you're sat there waiting for all your food. The tortellini of veal was just bland and watery. Then my uh, grilled sausage. I've never seen so much garlic in addition all my life. Gordon called me out on my food. I'm not fucking happy. Italian food is about russicness, phenomenal ingredients, and something that's relaxed and casual, but in a delicious way. Yeah. And I just found it you know, somewhat boring, to be honest. You'll see us rock it out. Go on. My food, I think, is, is pure and honest and good. I think it was a mistake that I did this. But, man. Up next... Why did you decide to become a chef owner if you haven't got a clue how to run a business? Gordon serves up the truth. I've never seen such humongous portions. You wouldn't eat that, would you? Can Joe swallow it? No. All right, you know what? Why don't we make it a public issue with this now? There's customers here, there's customers here. I'd rather have this conversation downstairs. How about that? Would you want to fight? And when the staff monkeys around... Yes, yes, yes. You! Gordon goes bananas. Right, who's going home? That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. Day two, and with this restaurant in financial hell, Gordon knows that he needs to increase business. But he also needs to find ways to cut costs. I've been thinking about this overnight, and what's bugging me now is, what's he wasting in his fridges? That's my concern now. This must be a pain in the ass. The minute a muscle opens, they're no longer fresh. They're gone. That's dangerous. That's... It's dead. The muscle's dead. This menu is far too big for his own good. I don't understand what's going through his mind to have this fridge stocked with all these ingredients and no customers to cook for. Look, bag after bag after bag. There's nearly two months' worth of chopped garlic there. This is where his $80,000 debt is in all these ingredients. This fridge is stocked now like a restaurant that would be fully booked for three, four weeks in advance, and we haven't got those customers. So why the fuck have we got all this ingredient? Stupid. Absolutely crazy. With a young head chef and an inexperienced owner, Gordon decides it's time for Restaurant Management 101. You're in charge of the purchasing, yeah? Yes. Those fridges are stocked up for a, a busy restaurant. We haven't got money to waste. There's endless ingredients in there that are not being used properly. Everything we buy is costing money. I can point fingers in every direction for the, the walk-ins being crowded, and it's a catch-22, because if we run out of something, Joe throws a fit. When was the last time you had a budget? Per week is $4,200. I don't think we're scrutinizing what we're purchasing. I could go in there and just give you $500 of waste. I saw that fucking walk-in in a completely different light. I went, holy shit. Hopefully, Gordon's economics lesson has sunk in. Now it's time to see how this jovial bunch handles a dinner service, which, given the lack of customers, shouldn't be that difficult. You're going to get in trouble. <laughs> Even so, Gordon has to make sure these kids stay focused. OK, right. You, you, you understand what's going on. This is not party time. This is serious time. Yep. Nothing to do with friends. Take it fucking serious. I will. Run it like a boss. Let's go. But old habits die hard. <laughs> Campani is like high school because it's like really close knit social environment, so everybody like really gets along. Yes, 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 yes. 
I'm probably like the biggest flirt here. We just all feel very comfortable around each other. While Campania Restaurant is really more like Campania High, Gordon wants Joe to start treating it more like a business and less like a party. Two seconds, everybody, yes? Here we go. Right, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven members of staff. Staff costs. Right. Who's going home? That was, that was pretty blatant in a... It's, a... it's a big move, real big move. Gordon definitely means business. Business! Sorry, guys, thanks for coming, but thanks, but no thanks. It's a little scary when Gordon all of a sudden eyeballs you. Who's going home? Trucks. See you, buddy. Play Out. guitar. Good. Take care, buddy. Get yourself a haircut. <laughs> next. I need three on the floor. Three waiters on the floor. Let's go. Who's next? Katie. Katie, thanks, but no thanks. Any questions? I cut a few people. They were clearly upset. You know, Katie was definitely upset. Katie, no, get out of my fucking face. Come on. I had to, you know, I had to make a tough call tonight, and I really wanted to have people tonight that were, you know, on their game. I'm good enough when he needs me, when his ass is on the line, but not for that I came in tonight and canceled dinner plans with all my friends. Because, but... Good luck. Let's go. With the staff now trimmed down, playtime is over. Good evening, madam. How are you? Good to see you. And it's time to focus on the customers. So is one order or two? I'll have the muscles to it. So two orders, OK. Order in, please. Appetizers walking in. Salad, risotto, mussels, mozzarella, entrees are pork, rotetto, cod, and a chicken. I'll just get the chicken also. OK. Come on. As orders hit the kitchen, the staff is quickly overwhelmed and everything is moving at a snail's pace. How many of these did you sell? Guys, come on, don't yeah. lose it. Look, I, I had some polenta wedges. They went back there, and, they, and they're lost. They're right here. They're not me. Fuck, man. Excuse me. Is there any possible way we can get a um, shrimp cocktail? That's what Campania is known for, is waiting three hours for your food. Are you guys OK? Yes, we're getting we're restless. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's hungry. It's been taking a long time for the appetite. I'm starving. And not surprisingly, problems in the kitchen have customers totally frustrated. I want drink wine and wine and wine and wine and wine. Cheers, guys. Cheers, authentic pizza. Yeah, how you doing? Um, I'd like to place an order for a pizza. What the fuck is 13? That fucking never went out? Oh, come on. Fuck it. Yeah. It was nuts. It was crazy. I need that risotto, Joe. What, one more? No, it's on your table, Joe. Joe, yes. it's on your fucking table, my man. Holy shit. Come on. Were you guys sitting here for a while before anybody came to you? It's 30 minutes for a salad. I have people pointing at me, and they're going like this, and I don't understand. I can't tell them, you know, how hard it is to put lettuce in a bowl with some dressing. Come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on. We're getting backed up now. I'm waiting on a cut. Come on, table three. Sell me that cut. I'm trying to fix it. You passed it to me broken. And when the food finally arrives at the tables, it's met with mediocre reviews. The worst thing you can do with fish is overcook it. Yeah. This is great D dog food. Just, just stop, 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 stop. Joe? Yes? Guys, I'm sorry, but I'm not fucking serving that, yeah? And I'm not serving that. So will you please stop what you're doing and do something about it? Guys. Another observation by Gordon of this restaurant's inefficiency is its portion size. Almost every customer leaves with a doggy bag. Unbelievable. Right. And huge portions mean unnecessary inflated food costs. Oh, so yeah. Really? Yeah. I've made the decision, bite the bullet on the portion sizes. I think that's what the people like. What, uh, what's wrong with that? Uh, nothing is wrong with it. It's going to take it away. They're taking it away. Taking it away. Oh, my god. Even the fucking dog's got a serving there. There's a bone for him as well. Yeah, there's huh? a Losing business big time. As Campania's customers leave with their massive leftovers, Gordon knows it's not just the food they're taking, but Joe's profits as well. Sit down, sit down. <laughs> Did you want all this food now? Do you have friends with you? Yeah. And right now, you're my guest. OK. Yeah. Let me just point two or three things out. Okay. This is two appetizers, two entrees, mixed salad, and your bruschetta. I'm trying to show you what you give your customers every day, lunch and dinner. 
I've never seen such fucking humongous portions. Every customer that left here this evening took food to go. It's what the customers are used to. The customers love this. They like the big portions. For a man that's fucking financially in the shit and throw money literally down the drain for every dish you put in here, and then on top of that, you can't even fucking grill a piece of bruschetta there. See that bit there? You wouldn't eat that, would you? Huh? No. Talk to me. No. You're getting upset now? Yeah, I'm getting real upset. Thank fuck for that. Hopefully, I'll get through to you now. You're throwing thousands of dollars down the drain. Why did you decide to go into business if you haven't got a clue how to run a business? All right, you know what? Why don't we make it a fucking public issue with this now? This customer's here, this customer's here. I'd rather have this conversation okay. downstairs. How about that? Are you scared again? Am I scared? Yeah. You're embarrassing me in front of my customers. Behind every restaurant is a family, and when the restaurant's in trouble, it's a family that suffers. So uh, I want to get to Joe's wife, Melissa, and just actually find out what's really going on in Joe's mind. Hi. Hey, how are Melissa, you? how are you, my darling? Nice how to you meet well? you. Likewise, good to see you too. You. Are you well? Boys home from school? Hi, they are. Yeah, and how are you doing, my man? First name? Evan. Evan, nice to see you. Girlfriend's name? Oh. Uh, this is a nice house. Oh, thank you. How long have you been here? Uh, four years. Four years, lovely. Yeah. So, um, three boys. Three boys. Big responsibility. Yep. Yeah. A lot of pressure on Joe's shoulders. Um, how do you think he's doing? He's very positive, mm -hmm. and you know it's his dream, and I know he's giving it his all to you know try and succeed. But mm -hmm. you know, it's not just all about being passionate in the kitchen. That's what I'm trying to tell him. And I whilst I love his enthusiasm around the food, it's a business. It's not just the food. I agree with you, 100%. I do, and I don't know. I mean, <laughs> so I'm glad you're here. I mean, I think he needs to see the black and white more. Mm -hmm. Hardest thing for me is that people like us put everything on the line for a dream. And I just want to see him have the time, you know, to succeed. Please don't get upset. I don't want you to get upset. Please. I told him all these things that you told him before. He needs to know the jeopardy. I'm like, as of this month alone, like, I can't pay my bills here. Like, Joey's months behind on us being paid. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's as bad as it probably gets, you know? If this restaurant fails. <laughs> We would lose everything. I mean, I'll lose my house. But this business can be turned around, and I've pointed out two or three things. Yes, it can. Yes, it definitely can. So you're going to help them? Yes. Now. Thank you. Having given Melissa his word, Gordon now knows that to turn this business around, he must spend time in the kitchen retraining the chefs, from food prep yep. to presentation. I've watched the way we serve food here. No one really gives any fucking care and attention to a little bit of presentation. I know it's rustic, but at least make sure that we've got a little bit of pride in what we're doing. That looks like a fucking... You can do better. Having Gordon Ramsay in the kitchen, that was pretty cool. He's on top of his game, man. That's why he is where he is. Just keep it flat. Yeah, it's just it's breaking apart. I don't know. It have so much water in it. Yeah, but you always salt it. Like you do like a granddad or like a maru. You salt it so it gets nice and firm. Put it down. He's one sharp cookie, I can tell you that much. Basically, he's teaching us that we have to step up. OK, chicken. Cut off the drum and the, the thigh and then sit them on top of one another. So it just looks a little bit neater, yeah? Now that Gordon has given Joe and the chef several pointers, it's time for Gordon to introduce a signature dish they can handle. Meatballs. Why can't this restaurant become famous for a meatball? I go to my restaurant in Sicily for meatballs. That's all I want. Just give me meatballs. Gordon showed us meatballs. I think it's a great idea. Let's go. A little bit of cheese on that. Good. I think us being known for the meatballs isn't so bad because uh, we're usually known for uh, food never really coming out ever. With the aid of Gordon's recipe, Joe and his staff are now armed with outstanding meatballs. Now it's time to conquer New Jersey. Meatballs. Oh, look at this. New Jersey's best meatballs. <laughs> New Jersey's, yes, best meatballs. OK. Joe, give out the T-shirts. Stick the t oh Out came the meatballs and the, and, and the flashy T-shirts and the hats. And we pretty much shouted the message loud and clear. Campania's got the best meatballs in New Jersey. Give these meatballs away and get the reputation out there on the street, yes? Get them all out, folks. We got the best meatballs around. Mm. 
Yeah. Stop on in and have some dinner one of these days. If we can start getting people into our restaurant for our meatballs, it's just a great step in the right direction. Now, let me put some hot sauce on there. This is so much fun. That's wonderful. We got some meatball fans. You're done. There we are. Everyone loved the meatballs. Does that dog like meatballs? I think he does. Look at him. He, he loves it. Campania restaurant. Campania restaurant. We gave out some food. We spread the, the word about the restaurant. We had some fun. You know you want them. Yeah. Just don't get hit by a car for them. The best meatballs in New Jersey. Now that the meatball marketing has spread the word about Campania, it's time for Gordon to have a serious one-on-one -on -one talk with Joe. You bought it 18 months ago. Over a period of 18 months, how much have you lost? Yeah, I'd say about 120,000. Shit. Sure. I'm in trouble. How serious is this restaurant for you? <laughs> it's, it's everything to me. You think you could continue like this for what, six more months? About that. Yeah, I think that's pushing it. Your business? He's about to fucking swim down the Hudson. I heard Gordon's point loud and clear. I mean, this is it. This is, this is, this is crunch time. Stand strong. Don't take it personally. Just take it seriously. Tomorrow is the biggest day. Coming up, it's Campania's reopening, and everyone is feeling the pressure. We need your specials now. She said the steak was too tough. Gordon has some quiet time with an unruly customer. You're talking out your rear. And while some people welcome the changes to the menu... Absolutely unbelievable. ...others aren't so sure. I felt like I was eating ragu. It's a night filled with emotions. Why did you keep eating if it was that bad? And a dinner service you don't want to miss. Next on Kitchen Nightmares. It's day four, and time for Campania's relaunch. Gordon's design team has come up with a contemporary new look to match the new direction of the restaurant. I've created a new look for the new Campania. Let's go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, how cool is that? Is that oh, nice? Crap. Awesome. Oh, how cute is that? Oh, my God. Oh, it's unbelievable. Wow. I was just absolutely blown away. Absolutely blown away. And it was just high time for it to be changed. Now you can oh, really. See, it's a restaurant. Oh, oh wow. All the lights are wow. on, all the canopies lit. It just looks really inviting now. It's awesome. We definitely needed this. It looks like a proper restaurant yeah. now. Thank definitely. you so much. Melissa, happy? Yes? Gordon has created so many great new things here. Like, the sign and everything shows that he's making it better. Oh, oh, that's so man. nice. Huh? Let's get inside, yes? Let's do it. Walk the on one this. thing you're Thank not going to smell when we get in here is garlic. Let's oh. <laughs> Hey. I opened those doors and it was just alive. The restaurant was alive. The whole place just metamorphosized with some great, simple little changes. The dining room looks unbelievable. Those candles are going to be awesome at night. Yes. Really? Isn't it nice? Oh, oh wow. I love it's the kind of place I just want to hang out. I am a little overwhelmed right now. I have really no words to say. You know, it's a little shock. The lights are dim, music is on, <laughs> right? Let's clutter there. This place is lovely. You guys have transformed yeah. my restaurant. Follow me through to the kitchen. Let's go. Jesus. Oh, no. <laughs> Joe's stressed out a lot, so when you see him smile like that, it makes you feel good. Oh Come through. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is so freaking cool. Launch the new menu. <gasps> a new stove. Yeah? I'm overwhelmed with this big, beautiful stove. You know, boys with toys, this is my new toy right here, baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Gene almost had tears in his eyes. Big, mean Gene. I don't have to light the pilots every time I turn it on. It's just phenomenal. Happy? Oh, wow. Good. Wow. Good, 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 good. I'm just so happy to see him getting a little help. He deserves to succeed. And I just, I know he's gonna. Gordon also provided smaller plates to coincide with the smaller portions. Oh my god. Any plates? They're smaller. Check it out. Plates were just way too big, and therefore we had to use a lot more food to fill them up, and that's also uh, losing money right there. Wow, man, I, I am speechless. You guys have done so much for us in one day. I don't yeah. know what to well. say. Next step in getting ready for the big night, Gordon sits down with the young chefs to introduce a brand new menu. Okay, the secret um, of the menu is to keep it tight. We have to start making money. I had some initial concern about what my customers would think about coming in and not seeing my big, diverse menu. This menu includes the new pasta and risotto section. 
the fettuccine, um, something you expect to see in any you know nice restaurant, but do it with a little bit more varied, you know, pesto, tomato, alfredo. I like the new menu a lot. Gordon's, uh, that's, he's one sharp fucking cookie, I can tell you that much. Um, the braised pork, that's a great dish. The creamy polenta coats the pork. The flavor was lovely. And then the bistecca, you know, a really nice grilled New York strip steak with roasted potatoes and spinach, beautifully done. The meatballs, we've done it in both appetizer and entree as well. We've now focused on our meatball as becoming a bit of a hallmark. If people start bitching, the meatballs are gonna come out of the kitchen. And hopefully that'll appease them while they're waiting. Try the meatball. I'm gonna go get it, I'll tell you. Try the meatball. I really like the new menu and the way we're doing it and the concept of having a smaller menu. Everything was good. Try the steak is awesome. An hour before the opening, Gordon comes up with a clever way to motivate the young wait staff. I've devised a plan, the same plan I have with my waiters and waitresses, that every item on this menu will be sold. Every item. Here we go. Come with me. Let's go. Up. Here is the menu, OK? And on these boards are your names. Each and every one of you, yeah, have got to sell every item on this list. The first person finishes a complete menu, you shout bingo. And there, you've got a $100 incentive. The whole idea of having a, a contest to motivate servers, I think it's a great idea. $100 to sell the whole menu. I have a 6 o'clock booking for table five. Perfect. Okay. You ready? I'm so fucking ready. We got to talk together tonight. We got to work as a team. I'm going to step up as much as I can, and hopefully it works out. You're expediting. You're delegating everybody out the kitchen, right? <laughs> I'm excited for tonight's dinner service. I think everyone's going to be on a good, positive note tonight. Now look at that oven. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's do or die for us. Failure is not an option. I'm not going to let Gordon down. I have to show him that we can do this. It's got to happen. Tonight is the reopening of Campania. Darling, could you open the doors, please? And Gordon Ramsay's new menu has packed the restaurant. Welcome to Campania. Welcome to Campania. This is the night Joe has been waiting for. But if it doesn't go well, it could destroy his dream. This is a big night for us. The pressure's on. Gene, first table's here, yes? Do it, guys. Good night. I want Gordon to leave on a high note. I want to be able to pull this off. Joe, write it down, spread the word, OK? We're going to do a red snapper in Cartoccio. I'll be right back in just a moment. Yeah. Take your orders so you can Thank look you. over the menu. Thank you. Go. Are you guys ready to order your entrees? What do you have? Steak. I'm going to try the meatballs and spaghetti on your recommendation. Sure. I'll have the ravioli. Ravioli. Perfect. Thank you, guys. Listen, everything sells together tonight. If somebody says their food's ready in two minutes, it's two minutes. The first orders are in, and Gordon's waiter competition is underway. You're off meatballs gone. What else? Chicken, chicken, chicken. I just got a ten top. I'm about to sell like half of it. OK, go, 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 go. The first customers of the night are responding well to the new menu. You have to taste this. This is, a, this is absolutely unbelievable. Best food I ever had. Good man. I but even good food can't impress everybody. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> That, that's horrible. That was horrible. That was absolutely horrible. Are you kidding? Or? No, I'm not. Oh, you're serious? That I wouldn't even feed to my dog. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Here I am now in this pinnacle moment, and I start hearing the complaints. It was almost too bad to be true. I need, you need to get feedback from me, OK? Why didn't she like it? She said the steak was too tough, which doesn't look tough to me. After Gordon sees nothing is wrong with the food, he decides it's time to stick up for his young chefs. What are you trying to say to me, huh? Oh, really? Why don't you just take a seat and just sit down and try to enjoy a cup of coffee? How can you enjoy something that when you come, yeah. my husband is starving, number right. one. Thank okay. You back. Okay. My steak was tough. Okay, good. Was but madam, tough. unfortunately, you're talking out your rear. Oh, and, yeah, and, 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 your mouth, oh, really? I don't but you're just walking around looking for trouble. You Why don't you just sit down and stop trying to cause trouble? Oh, come on. There we go. Will you? Ladies, welcome. Good evening. Hi, how are you? So sorry about the old bag. An hour into dinner service, and menu bingo is achieving its goal of customers ordering a wide variety of items on the menu. I want to see who's winning. Joe says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
I'm in second Come place. On. You're on second I'm halfway there. Now the pressure of the big night is taking its toll on Joe. There's too much saffron on that. It's too much. Oh, Jesus Christ. When anything goes wrong, the cod looks like shit, like absolute shit. Joe gets in that really stressed out, panicky mode. Why is that taking a long time, Joe? I worry about Joe. I worry about stress level. Huh? Why is that taking a long time? Uh, because those chickens just got cooked. Are you fucking serious? I need salt. I'm very reactionary. I get stressed out for like five minutes, but you know what? I just try to find that comfort zone. I could tune things out if I want to. Gene, I'm leaving you guys be now. What? I gotta run out there, okay? Looking for a little relief from the intensity of the kitchen, Joe takes a stroll into the dining room. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'll see you in a bit, man, okay? We got, we got a lot to talk. How's it going, guys? You guys have a horrible habit of dropping every fucking table in the restaurant at the same fuck time. There we go. Good talking to you guys. He's like Houdini. He's not around, and you have to pick up the slack. Gene, yeah, it's getting crazy out there. Now we got to step up again, yes? All right, guys, come on. With Gene left alone in the kitchen, One muscle's left. orders are backed up, and customers are now experiencing what Campania used to be known for, slow service. We've been here for 40 minutes, and I haven't eaten yet. We just had to do a lot of things differently tonight. We've been here since 7 o'clock. Everything it just took a while to come out. I mean, it's, it's insane back there. But uh, now it's coming right out. I'm so busy right now. I can't even breathe right now. Everyone's waiting for two hours for their food. Is it really not It's two hours already. How long does it take to make spaghetti? <laughs> I'm having lettuce. They don't understand what's taking so long. I mean, but at least if somebody would have came money. over in the last That's hour, the said so. I have a table of like eight people. They're upset. They want to speak to a manager. <laughs> Dropping table 20. Hold on, hold on. Everybody shut up. Dude, this is a fucking clusterfuck. Guys, what's going on? I don't know what to say. I don't. I was out at the table. They had a complaint. They waited a long time. Uh, they weren't happy with the food. I'm sorry about what happened. I'm sorry. That's not exactly what happened. All right, let me. I, I got. I got to run. I got to run back there. I'm sorry, but no, I do. I do. I guess you really do. At that point, you know, I really didn't want to be in that position, and I was really just trying to back away from the table. The fucking pasta's going in. While Jean puts out fires in the kitchen, the angry customer is making her way to the front of the restaurant and is now complaining in front of Joe's mom. She's out there complaining to these people. Is Joe out there? I don't know. I'm very disappointed. I've been here many, many times. I felt like I was eating ragu. Oh, I really did. Yeah, that one out there was saying the food's like ragu. She's out there moping. I had the fish, it was great. Uh, well, somebody else had the fish, and it tasted like pond water. I'm listening to this witch. I want to go strangle her. I was so aggravated. I was so upset, you know, that somebody would do that to my son. While Joe could not defuse the situation with the unhappy customer, shockingly, a less than sober but satisfied customer comes to the defense of Campania. Hey, that was that she bad. Said, Don't take Why did you keep no. eating? No. Why did you keep eating if it was bad. that bad? What's her problem? If it was that bad? Because you're the fucking liars. You just right. want everything for free, you greedy fucking bitch. Oh, my God. God in heaven. heaven. You people are mental. Go have another bottle of wine, you fucking alcoholic bitch. Oh. Have another bottle of wine, you fucking low light. Who is that person? Why did you keep beating if it was that bad? What's her problem? If it was that bad? Because you're the fucking liars. You just right. want everything for free, you greedy fucking bitch. Oh, my God. You people are mental. Go have another bottle of wine, you fucking alcoholic bitch. Oh. Well, keep fucking smoking, you dirty oh. fart. Italian, honey. Yeah. Can Italian. I do a fucking cut, you give Italian? Us a Can I just be alone? Have another bottle of wine, you fucking low light. Who is that person? A police car on neighborhood patrol extinguishes the fiery argument outside the restaurant. OK, sorry, just uh, two seconds, please. Let's go. Back in the kitchen, Gordon asks to talk to Joe privately to get him focused and back on track. When you're pissed, straight to the point, over and done with, and move on. Yeah. Do you understand? Don't hide behind there. Mm. Step out into the dining room two or three times, in with the customers, 30 seconds, back out. Mm. If anyone's disgruntled, put an end to it immediately. Don't stand there bargaining with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just and, and back in. But yeah. always, I want to see you run it. Yeah. Yeah? I have to get serious. It takes me a long fucking time to get something through my thick skull. 
But when it, when it does happen, I'm steadfast. I was gonna do it, I believed in it. And when I believe in something, I fucking do it. All right, here we go, here we go. Come on, let's sell these, let's sell these. You got spinach? I wanna make sure that we're nice and vibrant, yes? Right now, two steaks, two veals, and a chicken, okay? Every steak that comes in now, right skirt, so we can tell the difference, okay? okay. Listen. And now that Joe has taken his mission seriously, it rubs off on his staff, who are now working professionally and efficiently. Skirt steak, okay. spread the word, okay? It. Make it a good thing. It's something special. Jazz Ramekin. Now I think Joe has motivation to do what he can to make it better, and he just inspired us all to, I think, just work work as a team, communicate, um, be a little more serious. They're catching you up now. Come on, come on, come on. The honey and the strawberries, so good. Yep, yeah, there goes one more. OK, I'm going to start the mozzarella over here. You've only got two left. Yes, I do. Yeah. Look at that, yes. I told you I was going to a bottle of wine or a hundred for you. I'm going to have the hundred. A hundred dollars I won tonight just for playing bingo. But, you know, I busted my butt and I sold everything I needed to sell. I knew I was going to win. I knew it. Server bingo is definitely fun. The whole idea of having a, a contest to motivate servers, I think it's a great idea. Ariana, I just won. Server bingo was a really novel idea, and it worked. We were all talking about afterwards. Hey, we want to keep doing that. We like the contest. That was fun. Can you guys handle these pickups now? There's not much more coming in. Really, nothing was going to stop me. Gordon really forced the issue on me, and I really believed at that point that these changes were good. Perfect. Joe, have somebody follow you with it. OK. Joe was uh, definitely more focused, especially behind the line. There was no practical jokes going on. Really, really enjoyed the food. It was great. Because we care. I was making sure that everybody was on top of their game. And if they weren't, I would, I'd be there to help them out. What? Wow. You're doing an awesome job. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you, too. Get to work. <laughs> good night. Have a nice weekend. Now that the last tables have been served, Gordon gathers the team together. The difference in tonight's service as opposed to last night's service was night and day. And we've done double the amount of people tonight that we did last night. 203 were in for dinner. We were consistent. The food was good. The service was good. And everybody had an appetizer, an entree, and dessert. What would be the take come what midnight? Say so we took in about $7,500. We made three times what we made last night. I don't think I've ever made the money um, that, that I made tonight. Tonight was a really successful night. Really was. Hey, hey. There's no words. No words to tell you how I feel about what Gordon's done for Joey. I am thrilled to death for him. And let me tell you what I saw. You, tonight, showed me that, yes, you were a head chef. Don't stop. Don't stop. I think there's good things in our future. I mean, we're going to dig our heels in, and we got a good groundwork now after Gordon came in here. In the days that followed, customers were thrilled with the new menu. Like, this is so good. It was delicious. What about the dessert? Is it? With sensible portions, less waste in the fridge, and more customers, profits increased dramatically. You know, I'm happy. I like the food that's going out the window. Happy customers, great food, good bottom line. Joe finally started behaving like a boss and not everyone's chicken. friend. You're going to sell two chickens for me, OK? Successfully taking control of both the front of the house. Pleasure to meet you guys. And the kitchen. OK, good. We're going to sell two steaks and a chicken. Somebody call at that door. Food's going cold. And now, Campania is known for its quality rather than its quantity. With the staff now ready to run a restaurant properly, there was one more thing Gordon wanted to take care of before he said goodbye. The food looked great on there, yes? We're not going back to stupid big steering wheels. That's what we're serving. Look at them. Aren't they horrible? Let's go. Yeah. Do one. Say goodbye to them. Say goodbye. Yeah, that's how you're breaking those plates was just like, you know, the weight, you know, coming off my shoulders. When Gordon broke the plates, we were like, rock on. That's fucking awesome. Goodbye to the big plate. Hello, profits. One, two, three, go. God, you're happy? <laughs> 
the breaking of the plates. How symbolic was that? Wasn't it awesome? Out with the old and, you know, into the new. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Well done, well done, well done, well done, well done. Well done. Well done. What up, big boy? Yes. Uh, you know, you hate to see him go, but it was a good time. We got to break all the fucking plates. He, uh, he was proud of us, I think. Right. Oh, shit. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think that Campania is going to be everything that Joey wants it to be. Good night, guys. First day I met Gordon, I couldn't wait until that guy said goodbye. But once I got beyond my pride being hurt, my ego being hurt, and started listening to what he had to say, he was like a true mentor to me. Gus wants to have to come back for the good food, not the portion size. Absolutely. Remember that, yes? Right. Good luck. Thanks. You fucking meatball. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> good luck. Take care. All right. Hey, don't stop. I won't. Joe and the Campania gang were a fun group to hang out with, but the lack of discipline was killing the business. It feels like they've changed. I only hope it continues. Yeah.